What's going on guys? I am back with another video. My name is Keith and I am the owner of Genetically Modified Dragons. Today we're doing an unboxing of some feeders. I got 40,000 mealworms. Um, I started already on the first box. I got another box right there. So this is 20k here, 20k there, and then I got 6k crickets. Uh, these are three week old crickets. Um, just going to be doing those unboxings. Also, the clutch started to hatch. I checked on a little earlier. So we got some new babies on the way. Uh, I'm going to take this out in a little bit and see if I can see what we have so far. So stay tuned for that. Um, if you're not subscribed to the channel at this time, go ahead and move your finger down or your mouse down to the subscribe button and click it real fast. It don't cost anything, uh, but it is appreciated. Uh, let me see. And then I'll show you guys some highlights for some of the babies. Um, something to stand out for me today. And I'll show you, talk, talk about it for a little bit. And that'll be it for the video. So stay tuned if you would like to see that. Again, I got 40K mealworms. 20K is already in here. I got to finish taking this newspaper out. I got 40K in this box right here. And then I got 6K crickets. Gonna unbox those. Um, try to see if we can see what kind of babies are in that incubator right there. It look like four or five may be hatched out already. I'm going to see if I can determine what they are while they're still in the um, lay box. I mean, not the lay box, but the egg box. And then I'm going to pick out a couple of babies to highlight for you guys at the end. Talk about their genetics and um, some of the possibilities you can do if you decide to purchase those once they go on the site. If I post something on the website, I mean, if I post something on this video and I say it's, it, it can be for... Be, Sorry, and I say it can be sold. Just contact me if it's not on the website, and um, I can we can discuss payments and stuff like that on it. Just make sure you remember what it is, because I do a lot of videos. I do videos every day, and usually the video that posts today was actually done the day before, or sometimes even three days prior. Sometimes I do like four videos in a day, and then um, schedule them out so I can get ahead of stuff and handle other stuff outside of reptiles i still come here every day to feed um and also i still do videos i just it just go further out or if i don't if i'm in a rush i can just come in here and feed feed clean the clean the real the real dirty stuff and then i can um i can go on about my day so sometimes i if i know i got a event or something coming up such as the reptile show coming up in here um in nevada it's going to be three day, a three-day event. I can record there as well, but I'll probably do three videos um, to take those days up. And then three days following those videos, you'll see videos from the actual show. Um, but yeah, let me finish unboxing these. We're going to get into that incubator. We're going to get into that incubator, um, see what those babies are, and get a couple highlights and talk about those animals. So I'll be right back. All right, guys, I got the 40K mealworm separated. They already shed and everything. By the time I'm done, it's gonna, some of them going to start turning into beetles. But I don't cool them down or anything like that because I go through them pretty fast. I need them to be moving when I put them in a cage so that the animals want to eat them right away. But I'm not going to feed any of these today. Uh, I'm going to gut, lo gut load them today. And what I use is this Dubia, this Dubia diet. And I just pour it in there. And then I um, throw a bunch of greens in here because they. They haven't had anything to eat for two days. I mean, nothing to drink. So the greens are going to be going pretty fast. My daughter want to pick up a handful. Let's see. If you guys remember Kylie, she used to help me back there cleaning and stuff. She quit. No, I didn't. <laughs> I actually fired her because she kept on leaving when I needed it. 
but he's gonna hire me back though. She did a video a long time ago. She did she did that same thing with a, uh, the black soldier fly larva, which is which is pretty much maggots. And the greens I'm using is these uh, spring mix, same greens I feed to to the reptiles. And I just put a coat over the top, just make sure they all nice and gut loaded for when I feed tomorrow. And I, I feed the crickets the same thing. Sometimes in here I throw the um, banana peels when I feed the uh, I feed the bananas to the iguanas and uh, the lacerta. The lacerta don't eat them as much as the iguanas do, but the iguanas go crazy for them. I'll do a video on that in a later date. But for now we're gonna do these feeders and um, get into the other stuff I talked about. But they go they go more crazy for the bananas than they do for the uh, for the insects. All right, guys. So we got the 6K um, crickets unboxed. Um, right now we're getting rid of these egg crates that they came with. We already be replacing them with new egg crate. Um, Kylie's doing it right now. We got to do a little bit more hard to really knock them off. Kylie gonna take over the camera while I do this real fast. Then we're going to replace it with new egg crate. And the reason I do this is because these have been getting soiled on by the crickets for uh, two days. Almost three. And with, with them being soiled, they're going to die faster. So I'm going to give them fresh egg crate feed them. Because same as the mealworms, they've been in transit for two days without anything to eat or drink. Um, there was some death in here, but I'm pretty sure they could overage to take care of that. keep a, a large supply of egg crates. I use egg crates for a lot of things. I use them for my roaches. I use them for the baby beardies. I use them for, I uh, actually sell them. Um, I have a um, add-on morph market in my local area for them. Probably about once a month I get somebody to buy some. Um, but I just keep it up there just to have some extra income but I'll show you how many I have right now and I try to keep at least uh, at least like 300 of them uh, like I'm going to a show I'm gonna be giving selling um, small small dubia so like 200 per container and then I'm going to be offering dubia food and um, egg cartons as well. So it'll be like a full kit. You can start your own colony if you like. 200, with 200 smalls, you should be able to get a good amount of males and females to start a good colony. Alright, so that's 6K crickets. And let me show you those egg cards I was telling you guys about. Keep them over here on top of my Euro Master cage. I'm gonna grab some right now and put in there. But I usually have it all the way full to here. So it's almost time to order some more. But I keep a good supply of them. Like I said, I use them a lot. I use these, I break them up for the, uh, for the crickets. For doobie, I use them whole and just stand them up like this. But for the crickets, I break it into smaller pieces. So when I go to feed, I can uh, take out the small pieces and knock them into the cup. And I'm going to feed them in. And you want to you want to put egg crates or something that they can climb on so you can increase, increase the surface area for them to climb on. So they're not trampling on one another. The more surface space they have, the less likely that they are to die off on you very fast. So the first thing you do is give it an old air carton. 
second thing you do is give them new, something new to climb on. It could be egg carton or something else. I use egg carton because it's cheap. And I have it all the time. But right now we're increasing the surface area inside of this bin. And then I'm going to add greens and some more of the Dubia diet. Just like I did with the middle ones. So that they're nice and gut loaded when I go to feed tomorrow. And I put like three of them in here just broken up into smaller pieces. If it's more if it's more creatures, then I'll do more. So this is gonna be the third, third and final one right here. And they have they're gonna have plenty of space. They have both the top and the bottom of each piece of part air carton. And then they have the actual space inside of the inside of the bin. Some people use uh, food bowls and stuff inside of here. I just throw this, the food inside. I usually put the food, the actual food in one corner. Or multiple corners. So I'll do it like that and then I'll do it on the opposite side as well. And I make sure that stays full. That's the last of it. And then I'll sprinkle the greens all across the top so it's everywhere. And then tomorrow they'll be nice and good loaded with minimal deaths. Um, so now that we got the feeders out of the way, we're going to go ahead and um, get into these, these babies, see if we can identify them at this size was out so far. I'm gonna try to do it quick so I can get the rest of them back in the incubator to finish hatching. This is my first um, hybrid to hybrid pairing. So now you got one zero. So maybe a trans zero. So I think the female pulled off a trans. And these are like two more zeros right here. I don't see a wibblet or anything like that yet. This one looks like a Pretty much a normal. I'm thinking that's a trans zero. And then those are two more zeros. Uh, so that's three babies fully out, one pipping. Oh, this one's not even fully out. This tail is still in the egg underneath the substrate. But yeah, let me get these back in there. Hopefully they're all out by tomorrow so we can do a full assessment on what hatched out. Again, this is my first uh, hybrid to hybrid here. I gotta go look at the uh, female genetics again to see what else she's possible head for. So I, it'll help me identify other things. Another thing with crickets, they can they can climb more than dubia. And if you use colored totes, they have more traction on the colored totes. If you use clear totes, they have less traction and they can't climb it. So in ideal situations, I use a clear so that they can't climb, but this is usually a dubia bin. Uh, that's why I have it cut out like this. I usually have a top on it. I put the heat pad on, on this side and I put the water crystals or I always feed on this side with the moisture and it raises the humidity in here and the humidity escapes right there. But, but now I'm gonna um, get a couple dragons out, show you guys probably some of the smaller ones that are not ready to go yet. So you guys can see what's up and coming. So hold on for that. Alright, we're going to start with this little guy. Or a little girl. I'm not sure what it is right now. Um, this is a translucent whiblet. And this is from the last... Um, who is it? Pandora and Stitch Clutch. And then... I went all the... All five... see like five clutches. All five clutches without getting any trans zeros. And this is the... Well, pure trans zeros. I got a trans wero. Um, I got three in this clutch. Well, 
two now. Yeah, you can see a little color coming in on it a little bit. Got a little color by the ear. If it was a zero or a weirro, it wouldn't have that color on it. But it is a translucent. It's a little tiny baby. Barely about a week old now. Probably not even a week yet. You gotta check the date. But uh, that's the first one I'm gonna show you guys. A little up and comer. All right, here's a little translucent. If you've been on the channel for a little bit, you've probably seen this guy already. Um, he's falling a little bit behind his size, but he's not skinny or anything like that. And I'm hiding his foot because this is the one that was hatched out with a little deformity on his leg. Like, yeah, extra toes and everything on there. But he's been eating well. As you can see, he's not skinny. Um, the offer still stands. If anybody wants this guy, just pay the shipping. And I get him shipped out to you. Pet home only. And don't mark it as a rescue. Because he's doing just fine. He's eating well. He's thriving. So it's not considered a rescue. But he does have special needs. But not even really need special needs. He just have a deformity. So if you're interested, let me know. I'll get it shipped out to you. Contact me on email, not in the comment section. Contact me email or DM on Instagram. And a little translucent. And let me sex it. I never sexed it. piece of shit right there get that off I'm guessing a shy little girl a little piece of shit is blocking my view at the correct area. Let me see. Let me reposition. like a little female look like a little female I don't want to stress my stress her out too much if it's a female but I'll double check it if it, uh, somebody actually want to take it uh, just contact me with your zip code and I can tell you how much shipping is going to be and I can get it out to you or if you're going to be in the Vegas area just provide me Proof that you have adequate resources to care for it, and you can come pick it up, or I can meet you somewhere. All right, this one is from the same clutch. You can see the size difference. This is one of the bigger ones in the clutch. Uh, let me get the camera to focus real fast. Camera's not really focusing. This is a translucent, either zero or wero. Shoulder pads are kind of hard to tell. He's lightening up already. He's still pretty dark. I'm saying this is a translucent wero. If it's a female, it's another keeper. It's a male. Um, he is available if you guys are interested. Translucent, I'm gonna say wero. Alright, got the 
camera to focus a little bit better now. You can see there's no uh, black spots on the shoulder pads. This one is not on the website yet, but if you see this video, uh, just contact me and say the male Wero from the video and just tell me the date of the video and I can Actually, I'm going to take some pictures and post them on the website, actually. So, it's a trans Wero. There's, um... Uh, 50% possible head. No. Yeah, 50% possible head hypo. Nice and thick. One-eighth barbata. No shoulder pads. Zero. Wero. Zero and with blit. Double, sorry, triple recessive. And I'm going to show one more animal. Showed him a couple times before, but he put a little bit more size on. You can see the pattern a little bit better now. So I'm going to show him again. My pride and joy is actually a female. But yeah, I'm going to take some pictures of this guy and um, post them up on the website. All right, here go my little girl, my little whole bag. You can see that pattern a lot better now that she got a little bit more size on her. Full belly. She got black eyes. I don't know what I will pair her to right now, but she's very, very nice. And this girl is uh, zero, so you can see the shoulder pads on her still. She's 66% um, probable head um, zero wiblet. No, sorry, translucent and 50% possible head wiblet. I'm pretty sure she's going to prove off for translucent because I think that patching is because of the translucent. And she also may be a genetic stripe. But being that she's zero, zero takes away all pattern. And this is not considered pattern. This is like patching. It's the genes are battling against one another. And this is the expression of the genes battling. Um, some people may consider it a paradox. But it happens a lot with zeros with multiple genes inside of it. Um, That's my little whole back female, got some size to her now. But alright guys, I'm gonna end the video on her. Um, be back tomorrow, I gotta do a whole bunch of cleaning. So, I don't know what the video tomorrow is gonna be, but tune in. Make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Um, comment down below, hit the like button if you learned something from this video or you saw something that you liked, just go ahead and like the video helps the video the channel grow a lot you know it doesn't cost you anything all right guys i'm out peace